Hello and welcome everybody. In this video I want to show you how you can tweak the SPT experience to your liking. For example, how to change the game economy and build around a certain experience or theme like Hardcore Zero to Hero with much more expensive items or live like a scavenger with no traders and flea market at all and so on. I will start off with some basic quality of life mods that are not impacting the gameplay at all. Then some really useful mods that improve the game but also can be used to cheat or bypass unwanted mechanics and finally a tutorial on the profile manager and server value modifier mods which let you implement your own rule sets and have tons of different options. I decided to not touch sane and donuts in this video. These are really mandatory AI improvements in my opinion but would need their own video. If you want to see that, let me know down below. Realism mod is also not included. A lot of people like it, but it is really not for me and again a beast on its own which would need a separate video. Ok, let's start with some basic mods I highly recommend but which do not interfere with the gameplay. All mods are linked in the video description. The install process is super easy and explained on the mod page. More check marks gives you all relevant information about an item. Is it a barter item? If yes, what do you get in exchange from it and from whom? Can it be used for crafting and which items can be crafted from it? Do you need it for a hideout upgrade? Including color codes which indicate the item's purpose on pickup. Next goes hand in hand with this and is called item sell price. It does exactly that, shows you the item's value in the description even sorted after traders. Also works with custom traders from mods. Super helpful when sorting through your items during a raid. And the other mod I could no longer live without is ammo stats in description. You get armor pen and damage values in the ammo tooltip and the item background has now a color coding which indicates its penetration class at one glance. You can even change the color coding to your liking through the in-game F12 menu for mods. Algorithmic level progression is another mod I would recommend using. This one simply adjusts enemy level closer to your personal level, so no super high level PMCs thrashing you or boring low level NPCs on higher levels. It still allows for a certain enemy level range and even some very rare outliers on purpose to spice things up, but overall a much more balanced experience and it improves enemy loadouts significantly. Immense graphics is also a must in my opinion to get rid of the brownish color filter of the original game. I always just leave it at the default settings but you can tweak a plethora of options to your liking. A big visual improvement with no performance impact at all. Next up we have super helpful mods that can be used to cheat or bypass certain mechanics. I highly recommend dynamic maps. This is a true game changer in terms of quality of life. No more tabbing out to check a map or placing it on a secondary monitor. The overlay can show you quest locations, open exits and so on. I bound the hotkey to one of my extra mouse buttons. You can set it to pop up while holding the hotkey for a quick glance or a classic on off toggle. It is such a simple but enormous improvement to the game. But it also has the option to show you enemy scavs, PMCs and bosses on the map. And here you are entering the cheating part of this mod. If you toggle this information on, you certainly diverge from the original gameplay experience a lot. And there's nothing wrong with that if you are looking for a more relaxed experience. But if you want to keep the thrill of not knowing where the enemy exactly is, you should stay away from that option. Every additional information on the map is optional and can be toggled on and off. Next is a mod that is quite cheaty but gets rid of a gameplay mechanic I do not like at all. The game has a very overcomplicated and unfun find a million keys for all the locks with nearly no common sense for where to find those keys mechanic. This is my personal opinion of course, but hunting those mostly randomized keys is a giant waste of time. So the open sesame mod gives you the option to simply open a door when approaching it. 
And lastly in this section I can recommend the quest skipper mod. This lets you super conveniently bypass every quest section if you want to. So not doing an atrocious quest for the hundredth time but unlocking the quest behind it, skipping those pesky gun building quests, starting a new character but picking up the quest line where you left it. No problem with this mod and the implementation makes it super easy to use. And finally the two mods which let you define all the game rules to your liking. Profile editor and server value modifier. Both are self-running executables and I will walk you through the most interesting options and give you some ideas how you can truly define your own game setup. The profile editor can be placed anywhere on your computer, no need for a special location. The server value modifier needs to be placed exactly here to work, otherwise it will not be able to create your presets in the correct folder. So extract the server value modifier folder exactly into your mod folder and nowhere else. Then double click on the folder and start the executable greed. Select a preset name it to your liking, save the preset and hit apply. Upon starting the local server on your PC, a blue line stating your preset's name should now appear. Because you can have multiple characters on your account and switching freely between them, you can also have different presets tailored to these characters. Here's how I use those two mods to create my own rule sets and game experiences. I will start with the profile manager. I usually only use this once on a new character to define my starting point. After you run the program you can select the SPT folder and even the specific character on your account as stated before. You can now change trader standings, quest status, hideout levels, skills and add items to your stash. I walk you through the best options with an example. Let's say I want to start around level 20 with traders at level 2 and some basic hideout installations and skills to skip the super early game. We will also unlock all cosmetic gear and add two special containers. After you created the character, log out and close both SPT apps. Load your character in the profile manager. I hop into the merchant tab and set all to level 2. Upon saving, the manager reminds me that I need to be level 20 for that and offers to fix that setting. Hit fix and apply, voila, level 20 and traders at level 2. I leave quests untouched, but if you want to start from a certain point, here you can change it. For hideout I just select workbench level 1 to unlock weapon modding and maybe shooting range at level 1 to see how the optics on a gun work out. In the skills tab I put some basic skills to level 2 and strength to level 15. You know I hit the gym on a regular base so I'm confident my alter ego can carry a few extra kilos. In the stash tab I select adding items on the right side and start typing medicine then selecting the medicine case and hit add. Same with the thermal bag. Now on to clothing and acquire all. Because I don't want to grind through all of it again, you also have access to both styles, bear and usec. And that's it. I now have a mid-game start with all the quests still ahead of me. But I could also set all traders to 4 and all the quests to success if I just want an endgame character to terrorize the maps and so on. You can even export and import your character's progression, for example to not lose your quest progression on a new account. As you can see, this is the perfect tool for an initial setup, which is what I use it for. And finally, the big beast of this collection, the server value modifier for setting up your favorite rule sets and game conditions. Here are a few of my favorite tweaks to give you some ideas and which settings are worth fiddling with. Noteworthy options in the inventory and items tab are the removal of backpack and secure container restrictions. So you can for example put backpacks of the same type into each other or guns into the secure container. The global price multiplier is not where I would change prices because it would also increase or decrease the sell value of items and somewhat negate the effect. We will deal with that later in the trader tab. Increasing ammo and currency stacks are also interesting options. The best option in the hideout section is increasing your stash size. As you can see I set it to 100 for each edition. Originally EOD with 88 was the maximum. 
removing skill levels and trader standings for hideout upgrades are also go-to settings of mine. The rest I usually leave untouched. Now the trader step is really important when setting up your economy. You see, balancing prices and availability of items can be a very tricky part. Swimming in money isn't really fun and you usually want to find a good balance, especially for the late game. I give you an example that works for me. This setup on screen has removed all barter offers, so it is a pure money economy and I removed the found in raid requirements for quests. I usually combine this with a switched off flea market, more on that later. As for prices, I increased all initial trader pricing from 1 to 2.25. After a few playthroughs, this is the sweet spot where I will always be on the hunt for money and losing a kit really hurts even later in the game. I also reduced fence offers to 100, removed any gun builds from his offer and set his price multiplier to 3. I highly recommend playing around with this step to set up the economy to your liking. It is the backbone of your experience and don't be shy to change it along the way. Another core mechanic is insurance behavior in the next step. You can totally disable it or in my case make it really expensive but the return rate is set to 100% and also more or less instant. So to ensure a fully decked out gun, it will cost me up to 350k and above with the price multiplier set to 2. I also increased repair price markup from 1 to 3 but left the rest untouched. In the player and health tab I only changed head health to 50 from 35 so I might be able to take one bullet to the head without totally breaking the balance. Increasing your health here too much will also drain your med kits a lot faster. If you want to progress faster in general, then changing the XP gains is a great way in this tab to do so. Rate settings is next. As you can see, I removed the key card restriction for the laboratory, added snow permanently to all maps and extended the raid timer by one hour because I really like to explore the maps on my own pace. Notable options in this tab are saving quest items on death, making all chance-based and co-op extractions available and removing restrictions from various extraction points. The next big impact on your economy is how you handle the flea market. I mostly turn it off by setting access to level 70, but you could also go with an access at any level you like. In this example it is set to level 10. The amount of offers is vastly reduced and the price range is set to 2.25 to 3 in line with the trader's pricing set to 2.25. I also cannot sell items on the flea market by reducing sell chance to zero. Be careful with the blacklist removal because the now not blacklisted items tend to be very cheap which would undermine any effort to make things more expensive. I would rather unlock the Traders offers locked behind quests, this way the items are better priced and for the most part also walled behind a certain trader level. In the case space manager I slightly adjusted some containers like the simple wallet, magazine case or thermal bag, nothing crazy, just two or three more rows or columns. The Alpha Secure container now has the same size as the Epsilon container and I can put a wallet and keychain into the special slots. And finally in the Scaf tab I reduced the cooldown timer to 10 seconds to be able doing Scaf runs whenever I want. Access to the lab might also be an interesting option here. I hope this rundown of options alongside an example gave you some insights and ideas how to set up your game. You see the possibilities for customization are nearly endless. You can make it as harsh or easy as you want. And having different presets for different characters all on one account is really cool to spice things up. What are your preferred setups and rules you use on your runs? Let us know down below in the comments as inspiration for other players. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you all have a great time and are able to enjoy yourself. See you around.